Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about another type of ADCs, which are known as integrating ADCs. Sometimes they're also referred to as rump and slope ADCs. And the key characteristic of these circuits with respect to other ADCs is that they tend to have higher precision at the expense of speed. And so in terms of applications, these circuits will be generally used for applications that value precision over speed. The integrating ADCs can be classified according to the number of slopes used. Uh, based on that, we will have single slope a in integrating ADCs, dual slope ADCs, triple slope, quad slope, etc. The main idea is that as the number of slopes increases, uh, the precision of the circuit increases. So we will say higher precision when we move in the direction of a higher number of slopes, but lower speed. And as we shall see, in terms of ADCs, we typically measure the speed in terms of the conversion rate, which is the time it takes for an analog sample to be converted into the digital form. We're going to focus uh, on the single slope and dual slope versions. And as we shall see, in the case of the single slope, we have a reference signal that gets integrated. That's what they are called. It's called an integrating ADC. In the case of the dual slope, the signal that gets integrated is the input, analog input signal. So let's start with the single slope ADC. And if we take a look at the circuit, we will see that the first uh, component or the first block is an integrator. Uh, with the signal negative V ref applied to it, I'm applying a negative signal because it's a, an inverting integrator. The output of that integrator I've labeled as VI out, the integrator output, and is fed into a comparator and compared to the analog input, which I've labeled as V in. And uh, notice that I, I've labeled it as capital VI. I'm assuming that it is a uh, an input signal that is not varying or that it is varying very slowly. It could come out of a sample and whole circuit, in which case it wouldn't be varying. Uh, sometimes, <clears throat> if it's a slowly changing signal in an integrating ADC, you don't sample and hold it. But those get fed into a comparator. The output of the comparator, VC, controls a uh, control logic circuitry, digital logic, which basically controls a counter as well as uh, a reset switch in the feedback path of the integrator, which basically resets the integrator that could be implemented as a MOSFET switch, for example. So let's take a look at what happens as time goes on. We're going to assume the initial conditions. that the integrator is originally reset and the counter is reset. So a time equals zero. I'm going to assume that uh, VI out, which is the output of my integrator, is equal to zero. My uh, counter is equal to zero, which means my digital output, I'm going to refer to it as simply capital D. And it's set to zero. And the output of my comparator, which I have labeled VC, is originally, since everything is set to zero, I'm going to assume I have a positive value for my analog input voltage V in, and therefore my output of the comparator is set to high. And so at time equals zero, I start integrating, and I want to see what happens to my signals as time goes on. So as my uh, reference signal gets integrated, my output of the integrator is going to start increasing with a positive slope since I have a negative reference signal. So I'm going to represent that over here. This will be the output of my integrator. And at some point it's going to become equal to, it's going to reach the value of the analog input signal, which I haven't represented, but I could label as follows, my analog input signal V in. So at some point, my VI out reaches that value. Uh, up until that point, the output of my comparator was at a high state, so VC was sitting at a high. 
and my digital output was counting. Uh, so I have like several uh, clock cycles where my digital output is increasing. Uh, it increases by uh, one LSV per clock cycle. And so if I am to represent my clock cycle, it's been counting all this time. One clock cycle, which corresponds to one LSV increasing my um, VI out. Another clock cycle, another LSV, another clock cycle, etc. So it's been counting up until the time where I have reached uh, where my VI out reaches the value of V in. And at that point, which I'm going to label as uh, T1, T1, that's zero. So we said um, integrator starts integrating, meaning VI out as a function of time is equal to, I'm going to take a constant out of the integral already, uh, minus one over RC times the integral from zero to T of negative V ref dt plus the initial condition, which is zero. And my counter starts counting. Um, one LSV per clock cycle. Right, and we said that at t equals t1, vi out becomes greater than v in, and therefore the output of my comparator vc toggles to low. which causes the control logic to basically stop the counter or latch uh, the output of that counter and uh, reset the integrator. So uh, control logic um, latches and resets counter as well as resets integrator. So if I want to know what is the value um, of my T1, which is essentially the time that it's taken me um, for my integrator, for my output of the integrator to reach the, to reach the value of V in at T1, Uh, my digital word, D, my digital output, is proportional to V in. How do I know that? Well, because I know that the, this duration, T1, is equal to um, a number of clock cycles, right? And that number of clock cycles, I know that I'm increasing my digital input signal by one LSB per clock cycle. And so I can calculate T1 as being equal to V in divided by the size of the LSV times my uh, clock period. Now my LSV, I can calculate as always, is going to be equal to V ref, the reference voltage, which is the full scale voltage, divided by uh, two to the N, which is the number of possible digital states, m being the number of bits in the digital world. And so I can substitute this into the expression above. And therefore, I know that my t1 is equal to uh, v in divided by v ref times t clock times 2 to the power of n. And so in essence, by measuring the value of T1, 
I can figure out what is the value of V in. Um, notice that one of the major limitations of this configuration is the fact that my, my T1, the time that it takes for my uh, VI out to integrate, is proportional to uh, 2 to the N, as we can see in there. So major limitation, as we had previously mentioned, is speed. We need to allow for... Uh, two to the end clock cycles. T1 is proportional to two to the end times the clock period. Uh, another <clears throat> limitation of this circuit is that the precision is limited, as we shall see, compared to a, a dual slope. Uh, because there are different sources of error that play a role in the computation of the T1 and therefore the computation of, of V in. Um, so, uh, multiple sources of error, I should say. And we're going to list a few. One of the sources of error is the RC values and their accuracy, because they are going to play uh, uh, a role directly in the determination of the output. And RNC values, the sources of error will be things such as the tolerance of the components, uh, the temperature drift of the components, meaning drifting of the value of temperature, etc. Another source of error is any errors in the clock. So clock errors. Since we are basically computing uh, the value of T1, which is the, uh, the number of clock cycles, or is proportional to the number of clock cycles. And so any errors in the period of the clock will be transferred into an error in our um, calculation of output signal. And then other sources of errors, obviously, will be the offset errors from uh, the integrator, op-amp, from the competitor, etc. Sample and whole circuit, if we are using a sample and whole circuit. Uh, I didn't notice that sometimes in this type of circuits, if the input is varying very slowly, we tend not to use a sample and whole circuit. Uh, and so in essence, we are just assuming that the input is changing very little within uh, a number of clock cycles. But if we use a sample and hold circuit, then that will be another potential source of offset from the uh, sample and hold circuit.